Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about capitated fracture imaging. Capitated fracture are an uncommon cup file fracture. They rarely occur in isolation and are often associated with great, greater arch injury. Capitated fracture account for 1% to 2% of all kapal fracture. It is the second most common kapal bone injury in children. Capitated fracture are most commonly due to high energy hyper extension force. Capitated fracture will rarely occur in isolation. They can be subtle due to bony overlap and are most commonly transfer body fracture. This can be subtle on projectional radiography and best appreciate on cross-sectional imaging. So, these three wrist radiograph is the same for the same patient. As on the AP view, you can see lucency line of the body of the cavity. And on the oblique, we have to see clearly, but we can't find it. And in the lateral view, also we can see the lucency line across the body of the cavity. So this is the transfer fracture of cavity. In the MRI, we also can be appreciate to see the fracture line. So like uh, we can see the oblique hypo and ten line fracture line across the carpeted on the image in the right size and in the image on the left side we also can see the fracture line and bone marrow change of the capital. In general, conservative management is warranted for fracture that are non-displaced fracture that display a high level of displacement requires surgery fixation. Like the scaphoid, there is a risk of avascular necrosis at the proximal pole given it poor vascularity due to retrograde blood supply. Complication In very rare circumstance during a scaphoid and capitated fracture, the proximal aspect of the capitate can rotate 90 degree into the sagittal plane. This is known as scalpel capitate syndrome, which could be better described as a trend scaphoid, trend capitate perilunate fracture dislocation that is used to result in an inversion 
of the proximal aspect of the capitate. Thank you.